many of you consciously wash hands before eating every single time what if you are outside and what if you are eating at a vendor do you all still wash hands if you do it's great because that's the only thing standing between you and a worm the size of a pencil that can live inside your abdomen we are talking about ascaris lumbricoides which is a common round worm it's a monogenetic parasite meaning it is a living parasite on a single host it is also one of the most common gut worm infections in humans ascaris has a very elaborate life cycle and to understand it we have to study its structure it has a cylindrical elongated body with a round cross section and in this phyla that it belongs to ascalmenthes the sexes are separate also called as dioecious organisms they also show sexual dimorphism meaning just by looking at the organism you will be able to differentiate which is the male and female which do you think is the male and female over here if you have guessed this as the male and this is the female you are right So this is the male worm and the female worm. Uh, they have some features which are similar between them and some features which are dissimilar between them. This is the anterior part of the worm, the posterior part, the dorsal part, and the ventral part. Both the sexes have mouth which is present at the extreme anterior end. It is surrounded by chitinous lips. There are three chitinous lips. And when you move a little below the mouth, there is an opening which is called as the excretory pore. When you look at this, you notice that one worm is straight and the other is curled. Well, that's a major indicator for the sex. The curled posterior represents a male and a straight tail represents a female. The male has a cloacal aperture near the posterior end. This is an opening that is common for reproductive as well as digestive system. The cloacal aperture is surrounded by pineal spicules. These are useful during the mating process. A female has a genital pore or vulva in the anterior section of its body. It has an anus at the posterior end. in female the reproductive pore as well as the digestive pore are completely different when these worms mate the fertilized egg produced is called as the mammillated egg of ascaris from the outside this is how they appear the textured appearance of the egg is due to the protein coat and this appearance is called as the rippled surface just below the protein coat there is a chitinous shell and below that there is a lipid layer which is like your plasma membrane and within which you can actually find the cell these are the eggs which pass out along with the fecal matter and this is how the egg looks under a microscope these eggs undergo changes to produce larval worms it happens in multiple stages and it is called as moulting moulting means shedding basically when the worm goes through various stages of development it develops inside a shell but after a certain point because the worm grows in size it can no longer fit inside right so then and there it sheds the shell and creates a new one the mammillated eggs turn into what we call as the first stage arabidiform larva arabidiform larva is specific to ascaris this undergoes first molting to produce the second stage arabidiform larva this molting happens when the a uh, fecal matter is present in the soil the second stage arabidiform larva is considered to be the infectious stage with respect to humans the second stage undergoes second molting to produce third stage larva second molting occurs as soon as the worm reaches the lungs the third stage larva in the lungs undergo third molting to produce the fourth stage larva the third molting too occurs in the lungs Now let's look at the exact cycle of these worms. The second stage rabidiform larva enters into the human through contaminated food and water and then it reaches the small intestine. Here the larval shell dissolves and it releases the second stage larva into the intestine. 
The larva is also capable of moving to other organs in the body through blood circulation. This is called as the extra intestinal migration, meaning it is moving outside the intestine. So from the intestine, it moves into the liver using the hepatic portal vein. From the liver, it can move on to the heart using the inferior vena cava. And finally, it moves from the heart to the lungs using the pulmonary arteries. Remember, now the larva is at the second stage when it reaches the lungs. Here, it undergoes two maltings and it becomes the fourth stage larva. And then it starts doing something really weird. It tries to exit the body using the respiratory system. The larva is currently in the alveoli, right? From there, it moves to the bronchi, trachea, larynx, glottis and the pharynx in the reverse fashion. Once it reaches the pharynx, it has two options. It can exit either using the nostril or through the mouth. It is not uncommon to see Ascaris worms crawling out of sleeping baby's nose. By the time the larva reaches the pharynx, it is mixed with the mucus as well. So it is often mistaken for phlegm or mucus that we usually spit out. But sometimes, because we have the swallow reflex at the pharynx, it can once again go back into the body. So let's say someone swallows this mucus containing the larva. Then from pharynx, it reaches the esophagus. From there, it moves to the stomach and reaches back into the small intestine. This is the second time the larva has come back to the small intestine, but now it's in the fourth stage larval form. At this stage, it molds for the fourth time into a young worm. This worm then attains sexual maturity within the small intestine. The worms on attaining sexual maturity copulate and they produce these fertilized mammillated eggs which then create the first stage rhabditiform larva and the second stage rhabditiform larva. And then the cycle continues. So this is a summary of what we have seen till now. You can see that these are the larval stages. I have also mentioned where the maltings are occurring. This cycle can be split into two parts. One is called as the intestinal cycle and the other is called as the extra intestinal cycle where it goes through other organs outside the intestine. Now, what type of symptoms do you see in case of ascariasis, which is the infection when we have excess of ascaris lumbricoids in our body? If it is a light infection, which means there are only less worms in the body, you would be asymptomatic. But if there is a heavy infection, it would lead to nutritional deficiency because instead of us getting the nutrients from the food, the worm is taking it. Also, because of the damage in the intestine, it is no longer able to absorb the nutrients. We would experience severe abdominal pain because when the worms multiply in number, they cause physical blockage of the intestine. And in children, we are able to see stunted growth as well. 